Welcome back. My name is Patrick Ryan, and on the forum, I'm still Patrick Ryan. Uh, in the last video, we went through animation properties, and in this video, we're going to go into the render pipeline. So let's jump right in. Uh, as you can see, I have a boombox uh, loaded into the scene. And uh, in an earlier video, we talked about scene properties, and we went through some image processing, and that was specific to materials. So uh, these image processes were uh, useful on, or, or actually only worked on things that had materials, like the skybox and meshes. Uh, what we want to talk about today is, is similar, but slightly different. Uh, render pipelines are a what's considered a post-process. Uh, and what that means is we render the scene, and then we add the render pipeline on top of it. So it does cost extra resources because we're rendering the scene multiple times but it does give you a lot of control and it does affect everything that uh, even things that don't have a material like clear color. So what we want to do here is uh, I'm going to take you through a process that I would normally do uh, for look development or getting approval on an asset or if I'm just experimenting with textures and I want to see what something looks like in, uh, in engine. Uh, I will often come to the sandbox and set up a render pipeline and get the, the scene to look exactly the, way I want, exactly the way I want and then render out an image from that. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to update uh, my environment texture just so that we have a nice new uh, HDR image map for our image-based lighting. Uh, and I'm going to show you a different way to do it. Uh, the last time we, we actually clicked on environment, uh, update environment texture right here in the, the scene properties. But there is another way we can do this, and it, it affects the skybox as well. So I'm going to tab over here uh, and grab our uh, DDS texture that we, we talked about earlier. And I'm just going to drag and drop it into the scene. And what it's going to do is it's going to change the lighting, but it's also going to change the skybox to the same matching texture which is really nice, it's a good shortcut. Uh, so it does reset the scene. Uh, so I, let me get this uh, rolled into position where we want it. Uh, let's say about right there. Um, now to add a rendering pipeline, there isn't one in the scene. You can see that there's a, a no symbol next to the rendering pipelines, but if we right click on rendering pipelines and add a new default rendering pipeline, uh, you can see in the inspector window that we get an entire new set of properties. And these are all of the post processes that we can add to our scene. Uh, the first one I'm going to show you right away because we're not going to use it, uh, but I do want to explain what it is, is the glow layer. So you can see on the boom box here, we have some emission on uh, the window here that says play. Uh, if let's say this was a, a light and we really wanted it to glow, uh, turning on the glow layer does actually take anything with an emissive property and put a glow on it. Uh, this isn't something that we'll use for, for the final render, so we're not going to, to leave it on. But I did want to point that out, that this uh, glow layer only works on emissive textures. Uh, so then the next step that I would do is um, you can see that some of, the, some of the things under image processing are very similar to what was in the scene properties. So we can do things like control contrast and exposure and tone mapping. Now, uh, one of the things I do want to do is I'm not really happy with the light rotation here. So let me go back to uh, the scene property and change my rotation on my light. Uh, what I want to do is get the sun kind of at a grazing angle over here and give it a little bit more dramatic backlighting. So that looks great. Uh, we'll hop back to our rendering pipeline. And then uh, what I want to do, the first thing I want to do is because this is a high dynamic ranged image, uh, I want to turn on tone mapping and then switch over to aces. And what that does is it gives us a more dramatic effect. The blacks are richer, the whites are brighter. Uh, and so that's really kind of what we want to do. Um, now, having this glancing angle, the, the, the light bouncing off of that should be really hot. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to turn on bloom. And what bloom does is anything that gets uh, above white uh, is actually going to kind of give off kind of a, a halo of light. Um, and so I can pump this weight up a little bit so you can see as we go a little higher, and let's pull down the threshold so a little bit more is affected. You can really see in this area, we're getting that bloom. It's different than glow because it's only, it, it doesn't have anything to do with emission, uh, but it is a nice uh, effect of uh, anything that is super bright in your scene will actually give off this bloom like it does in, in the real world. 
the other thing that we want to do is uh, turning on aces. It did get a little too dark here. So I'm going to pull up the exposure a little bit. Uh, we have a little bit more room now. You can see that it's affecting bloom quite a bit. Uh, so that they all uh, will affect one another as they stack onto the end of this render. So you definitely want to play with these, and that's why I'm not going through them one at a time. You want to you want to uh, use them all in conjunction with one another because they do affect each other. Um, and as I'm looking at this, I'm noticing that there's a lot of sparkling aliasing effects around some of these buttons. So uh, one other thing we can do is turn on the anti-aliasing, the FXAA here. And when we turn that on, you can see it does smooth those out quite a bit, which is nice. Um, one of the other things that we really want to do, maybe we want to darken the, the vignette a little bit. So let me turn on a vignette. Um, we'll turn down the weight a little bit, uh, and then we'll increase the field of view just a touch. Uh, that is very much like the other one, but again, this is a post-process, so it works on everything. Um, and then maybe the last one we want to do is uh, depth of field. So depth of field is uh, a post-process that will blur out anything uh, like a camera does. Uh, we have a few properties here uh, based on the focal length, f-stop, distance, and lens size. Um, so this one might be a little bit uh, hard to understand at first, but I'll give you kind of like my process for using it. Uh, the first thing you need to do is uh, kind of dial in a distance. Uh, our focal length is a, a little too large, our f-stop's a little too small. So let me pull those down to a, uh, some more reasonable numbers. So let's pull this down to around 20-ish. Um, our f-stop, let's pull that up to about 15 or so. And then let's pull our distance back. And what the distance is, is the point at which things are going to be in focus. So you can see as I move it here, uh, we have some focus. Now, we still need to uh, play with how much is in focus. So let me pull that focal length down a little bit and push our f-stop up. And so what you can see now is we've got the front of the boom box in focus, but the back here is out of focus. And that gives us a, a kind of a, a way to draw the eye to what we want them to see. Um, and then the last thing, you're seeing that there's a little bit of banding in this uh, the skybox. Uh, one way we can get rid of that is by enabling grain. So grain will be really noisy when we first turn it on, uh, and it's way too much. Um, but what we can do is I can pull the intensity down uh, and see if we can kind of break up the banding with a little bit of grain. Uh, that can help in some situations. Um, it, you do it to do it to your your own uh, aesthetic. How much grain you want to use? It will make it feel more like a photograph. Um, and then I think I do still want to bump the exposure just a little bit on this, something like that. Okay, so let's say this is the, the, the final render that I want to send out and get approval on. So um, one of the easiest ways to do that is I could take a screenshot and then take this into an image editor and crop it down, but we've actually done, uh, we've added a feature that make this a little easier for you. So if I come over here uh, to this tab, I can just say screenshot, and then you can see we've popped up a screenshot, and when I double click on that, there's there it is right there, already cropped and ready to go. So. Uh, that is all for the render properties, uh, or I'm sorry, the render pipeline. And uh, the next video in the series is going to be on the tools tab. Uh, we hope that you've really enjoyed the series and that you're getting some great information out of it. Uh, you can see that we are really passionate about this, this uh, inspector tool. We hope you are too. Uh, and if you've learned something and you like the series, we would really appreciate a follow or a subscription on your social media of choice. Uh, thank you for being with us today. Have a great day.